If you could have chosen to be on any football team during the Euros, which team would you have chosen? Maybe you would have chosen England because that's our team. But maybe you would have chosen Italy because they won. I don't know what football team you choose, but what team do you choose to be on for life? The Bible says there's only two teams in life, the world's team or God's team. Which team do you choose? Well, in today's bit of John's letter in the Bible, he talks about how to get on God's team. Listen to what he says. He says, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is God's child. The person who loves the Father also loves the Father's children. How do we know that we love God's children? We know because we love God and obey his commands. John says, everyone who believes in Jesus is on God's team. It's not like what you have to do to get accepted onto a football team. To get onto the England football team, you have to be an amazing football player. I think you probably have to go to trials and prove that you're good enough at scoring goals and passing the ball and doing all the other things that make you good at football. I don't really know because I'm not very good at football. But that's not what it's like to be accepted onto God's team in life. You don't need to be an amazing person. You don't have to prove how good you are by doing good things and being nice. There's no test you have to pass. The only way to get accepted onto God's team is by believing in Jesus. It doesn't matter if you're good or bad. It doesn't matter if you're the best or the worst. All that matters is that you believe in Jesus. And if you believe in Jesus, you're part of God's team. Actually, it's better than being part of God's team. John says everyone who believes in Jesus gets to be part of God's family. And the love in a family is much deeper and better than in a team. So if you believe in Jesus, then you are part of God's family, part of his team. And what happens when you join a team? Well, you start to act like part of that team. If you get accepted onto a football team, you start to wear that team's shirt and you turn up to the team training sessions and you listen to the team manager and do what they say. In the England match last week, you could see Gareth Southgate, the manager, talking to the players and telling them what to do. And the players listened to him and did what he said because they're part of his team. And so John says, everyone that's part of God's team, part of his family, will act like part of his team. He says people on God's team love God and they love each other because they're all part of the same team, the same family. And they listen to God and obey his commands because he's like the team manager. Or when you think of it like a family, God's like the dad. And so being on God's team means obeying God. Being part of God's family means obeying God. But maybe when you hear that, it makes you worried. Maybe you think, but I don't do that. I don't always love God. I don't always love other people. And I don't always obey God's commands. Maybe God's going to kick me off his team. Maybe you feel a bit like Marcus Rashford felt when he took that penalty for England in the final match of the Euros and missed. When we think of all the ways that we failed at obeying God, it can feel a bit how Marcus Rashford probably felt, like we're not good enough, like we've failed. But listen to what John says next. God's commands are not too hard for us. Everyone who is a child of God has the power to win against the world. It is our faith that wins the victory against the world. So the one who wins against the world is the person who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. He says God's commands are not too hard for us. It feels like they are, doesn't it? We fail to obey him all the time. But John says that's okay. Because remember, your place on God's team isn't down to you. It's down to Jesus. And Jesus is the ultimate team captain. Jesus is the best person to have ever lived. He lived a perfect life, always loving God, always loving others, and always obeying God's commands. He never failed. It's like he took all the penalties and got them all in the net. A perfect score every time. And so being on God's team means that you win at life, not because you are good, but because Jesus is perfect. And so you are part of God's team because you believe in Jesus. He is your captain. He is your hero. He's the son of God, the rescuing king. 
And it's because of him and only him that you're on the winning team. And so being part of his team means you should act like part of his team. You should love God, you should love others, and you should obey God's commands. But when you don't, you won't get kicked off the team because Jesus is your captain. He's the one you believe in. It's because of him that God's team will win. And you'll get to share in his victory, not because you're good, but because you believe in Jesus and he is good. But what do you win? Well, look at what John says later. He says, this is what God has told us. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his son, Jesus. Whoever has his son, Jesus, has life. But the person who does not have the son does not have life. Being part of God's team doesn't mean you'll win a trophy like in football. No, being part of God's team means you will win eternal life. Jesus, the team captain, went into battle with sin and death and the world, and he won. He died and then came back to life, showing that he has won life for everyone who is on his team, everyone who believes in him. And so not being on his team is worse than losing the match at the Euros final. Not being on God's team means losing at life. If you lose at the football, you might get booed. But if you lose at life, it will end with death. But God's team wins against death. Everyone on God's team wins life forever, all because of Jesus. So choose God's team, believe in Jesus, and know that because of him, you have won life forever. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that to be part of your team, to be part of your family, all we have to do is believe in Jesus. Thank you that he has won the battle against sin and death for us. Please help us to trust that this week. Help us to believe in Jesus more than we believe in anything else. And we pray that because of what Jesus has done for us, that we would want to obey you and love you and love others and act like part of your family and part of your team. In Jesus' name, Amen.